Welcome back to Success with Stephen. My name is Stephen Smith. And today we're going to be talking about a special legal structure um, and business structure that a lot of people don't usually mention on YouTube when they talk about business, but it's one that's very important. And I do understand why people probably don't talk about it because it's not the easiest thing to explain and it's not the easiest thing to actually set up. Um, but we're going to be talking about nonprofit organizations. So um, this is very similar to when you start up any other type of business, uh, LLC, corporation, so on. But at the same time, it's very different um, in a lot of the things that it entails. But I do believe that it's a very, very, very important type of business to set up. And if you have a, a social cause and you want to make a huge impact, this is definitely the way that you want to go. And it can be very, very rewarding. Um, I at some at some point, I know I will set up a nonprofit for sure. Absolutely. Um, I just think that right now I would have to do a lot more in order to get to the point where I can give it the amount of time that it needs. So in this video, understand that I may not be able to touch on everything. There's a lot of other things that are going to probably be missed, but I will try to touch on as much as I possibly can in this one video. And if I need to follow up with more videos and if you want more information, then I will definitely, definitely be doing that. So without further ado, we're going to get started and let's talk about uh, nonprofits. Now, I do have a guide of how I want this this video to go. We're going to talk about what is a nonprofit. Um, one of the questions that I think most people want to know. So I made it at the very beginning. How do the founders of nonprofits get paid? Um, then we're going to talk about the process of setting one up, your mission statement, uh, choosing your legal structure, uh, registering and getting your permits, uh, building a board, uh, grants and funding. And then we're going to conclude this. So. Uh, a lot of stuff to cover in today's video. Now, let's just talk about what a nonprofit is. A nonprofit is a legal entity organized and operated uh, for a collective public or social benefit, as opposed to an entity that operates as a business aiming to generate profit for its owners. So nonprofits, their goal is not to make money. Their goal is to raise funding for a cause. Now, nonprofit organizations, they do not have shareholders, so they cannot make a profit in the traditional sense. However, they do need to generate revenue to keep their doors open and provide services. Um, and they do that by donations, grants, government contracts, and uh, the most common ways that nonprofits do generate money. Now, uh, with that being said, we're going to talk about the benefits of having a nonprofit because I, I think the Benefits need to be said up front because getting to getting to the point where you actually do qualify to have a nonprofit and to get a tax exemption can be a long process. So let's talk about the benefits of doing it first before we get into that. Now, setting up a nonprofit is not easy. It's, it's not. However, when you're able to get a 501c3 tax exemption, it becomes a lot easier for individuals and corporations to take your cause seriously. They also receive tax write-offs when they donate to your nonprofit, which is a win-win for both parties. So the the huge benefit of a nonprofit is the 501 um, the 501c3 tax exemption. That is the biggest benefit of having a nonprofit by far. Now, when you do have a nonprofit and you are, you know, really advocating for a social just cause, there are individuals, maybe friends, family, uh, donors. Eventually, when you have a lot of money, you're going to have to donate money to offset some of your taxes. One of the greatest ways that you can raise funding is finding people who need to who need to keep money in circulation. So they give money to your cause in order to get this as a write off on their taxes because it's money that they were going to have to pay anyway at least it gets to go somewhere that can help something that they believe in so again the 501c3 is a major major perk of starting your nonprofit um you have to you know you have to meet certain tax 
uh, tax criteria in order to qualify for this status. The application process to get this is a very long process. It could take weeks to months, you know, maybe even years. Um, it just depends on exactly, you know, what you're doing. The other benefit is grants and donations. So when you start a nonprofit, you gain access to a whole world of funding and opportunities. And this could be from corporations, government contracts, agencies offer grants, and they can provide you significant financial support for whatever your cause is, which can expand your reach and you can create an even larger impact for your cause. Some companies also will give you discounts on their products and their services. And just because you have a nonprofit and because you have a 501c3, you, whatever they're donating in their cause becomes a tax write off for you. Well, for them, excuse me, which then you can use the money and the grants that you get in order to put towards your cause and uh, personal fulfillment. I think that is one of the things that are understated that's understated in this. But the positive impact it has on people's lives, it can bring incredible personal fulfillment and i think when we're looking at our lives one of the most important things is that we want to feel like you know we we were able to meet our calling we were able to do something and leave a mark i i, I know that even though there's no monetary value in that i think that that's one of the most important things that we need for for our spirit everybody needs purpose i, I think going through life the the, the meaning of life is for you to find your uh, purpose. And there's a lot of purpose and value in starting a nonprofit organization. Um, so, yeah, hopefully when you do that, it becomes a very rewarding experience for you. Now, I want to get this one out the way early. So if you really came for, I would say, you know, just to understand this part, um, you know, let's let's just get this out, out the way. So how are nonprofit owners usually referred to as the founders, how do they get paid? So a nonprofit founder, they may pay themselves a fair salary for the work that they do running the organization. Likewise, they can compensate full-time and part-time employees for the work that they do. So the IRS says that earnings for nonprofits may not inured to the benefit of any shareholder or individual, which means you can't take the money that you get from a corporation, from a grant, from a donor and use it for your own personal use. That is not what you do with a nonprofit. Um, but the IRS differentiates between a benefit and fair compensation to the work being done. So a nonprofit founder can can pay themselves a fair salary for the work that they do running the organization, right? But you are going to have a board and the board is, think of it as checks and balances to keep everything running smoothly and running, running fairly and running with integrity. So just know that normally if you are the founder, you will look to your board to appoint you as, um, as an employee, maybe in a position like executive director, something like that where if you're spending hours and hours of your time to work on this nonprofit, you will be compensated for the fair work that you do. Now, um, you know, uh, again, for the fair work that you do, if you're looking to, to create, just get a whole bunch of money starting a nonprofit, then this is not for you. This is for your cause. Um, so one of the things that can lead to confusion around the issue of compensation for nonprofit owners is that there is a hard and fast rule about how much they can be paid. There, there is a rule. How, uh, however, the IRS does not penalize organizations that overpay executives or employees. So when I think about this, I think about IKEA. IKEA is, since 2008, is the largest furniture distrib distribution um, company in the United States. And they're a nonprofit, right? So... The my the major the majority of IKEA's holdings they're they're owned and operated by a parent company and that parent company is one of the largest charitable uh, foundations in the world. So, uh, you if just Google it, there's a lot of companies that you wouldn't expect that actually do operate as a nonprofit. But this is a very for IKEA for the example, it's a very complicated structure. And it does help minimize the taxes. Um, but again, it's very, very complicated with the way that they're doing it. 
and how they're operating as a nonprofit. So the, the, the main thing I want you to take from this section is that you can be paid as the founder of a nonprofit if you work with your board and they can appoint you a position, but you will be paid fairly based off of the work that you are doing. And you want to always keep this very clean and do it with integrity because you can be held accountable legally if you are not doing the things that you are supposed to do. That's why when you when you um, have a board, you need to have a president. You need to have, you know, potentially a CFO, a secretary, a treasurer. If you're appointing people that you care about in these positions and you're mismanaging money, they will also be held accountable if anything goes wrong. You're not just assigning people who are your friends and who are going to do these things. And you're like, I just sign here and you'll be my secretary. If something goes wrong, they will be held accountable for it as well. So I'm just saying that up front just to get it out the way, because it's always a question. It's a question that I had my myself. But the main purpose of this will be to have some type of, you know, social just cause that you believe in and that you want to make an impact on. So for nonprofit organizations, there are seven main categories that they can fall into. Uh, 501c3, that's charitable, that's religious, um, educational, that's probably one of the main ones that you'll see. 501c4, that's civic leagues and social welfare. Uh, 501c5, labor and agriculture. Uh, 501c6, that's uh, business and professional leagues. 501c7, social and recreational clubs. 501c8 can be uh, beneficiary societies and things like that or like sororities, things of that nature. 501c9 uh, veterans organizations. And if you take a look, uh, there's a bunch of different type of entities that you can take a look at. Um, but you would want to choose the one that is going to align with what you are doing. And that's going to be the type of of a 501c that you will categorize your nonprofit as how to start a nonprofit we need to talk about your mission your vision and your values the reason why we're you know going to spend some time on this is because your mission statement is going to be the thing that you have to send to the irs in order to get your your 501c status you're not going to be able to get that unless you provide them with a clear mission statement that they believe uh, proves without a doubt that you know they know exactly what you're going to be doing and this is what can make this process take a long time so just because you have a nonprofit, it does not mean that you're entitled to grants or donations you need to have people rally behind your cause your mission statement is the core reason why your nonprofit exists in the first place it's all about the problem that you want to solve that's going to be the, the biggest thing the impact you aim to make on the world and your mission statement it needs to be concise clear it needs to inspire it it needs to make people want to back you up for your cause and in order for you to create a powerful mission statement you want to ask yourself a couple of thought-provoking questions like uh, what issues do you want to address socially uh, is it environmental? Is it is it is it cultural? Um, you know, who's going to benefit from your work? Um, what specific outcomes or changes do you want to achieve with this exact mission statement? So take a moment to reflect on the organization's strengths. Uh, what, what are your expertise? What do you think that you can create as far as a meaningful and lasting impact with this organization? So use action oriented language. You want to you want to do things that that, you know, it it captivates and captures the essence of what you're supposed to be doing for this nonprofit. And if you do that, it'll make people want to join your cause ultimately. So. Your vision. Think of your vision as your picture of the future when you are envisioning what you're going to be doing with this nonprofit. That is what your vision should entail. Uh, create something that's bold that is that is you know it's it's going to be like the guiding star to what you're going to achieve in the future it should be ambitious it should be inspiring and it should be aligned with your mission that's your vision should ultimately be aligned with the mission and when you're crafting everything else you definitely want to make sure that 
all of your values are in place. Your your values are going to be your guiding principles. That's going to shape your nonprofit's culture. It's going to shape the behavior of the people who are going to be working there, the decision making. It's going to reflect your ethics. It's it's going to re- reflect your moral compass. You know, it's you want to make sure that the organization that you have and the influence that you have is strategic. It makes sense. It makes individuals want to, again, align with you and you want to operate with integrity. That's one of the most important things. And you want to make sure that there is a shared sense of purpose among all of the people who will be in this organization. And to identify your values, think about the principles and beliefs that matter to you most. What is the most important thing that you want to do with this nonprofit? What do you stand for? What qualities, what behaviors do you want to embody? Um, you know, innovation, collaboration, and just, you want to take all of this and you want to make sure, I know that's a lot. I know it's like, oh my gosh, that, that sounds crazy. But when you're starting this organization, you have to be doing it with purpose. And all of these things are, you know, they're going to be asked of you. People are going to want to know exactly what to expect from you. And you're going to have to be able to answer this directly, very concisely. And you have to motivate people to want to also join your cause. So it sounds like a lot because it is a lot. And it takes a lot in order for you to be able to uh, actually get people to believe in your cause. Now, let's talk about choosing your legal structure and your name. Now, I recommend that you use a trademark for your nonprofit. Reason being, if other individuals see your nonprofit, they can pretty much take your exact same name and stance in a different state. So at least if you trademark it, they can't just completely steal your likeness, even if they want to do something similarly, because maybe they were inspired by what you were doing. So, uh, we already know that the most common legal structure for a, for a, uh, nonprofit is the 501, uh, C3. And that's the one that you may want to actually do. Um, so when you're obtaining this 501 C3 status, the application process is very detailed, including the filing that you have to do with the IRS. Um, You want to make sure that your organization can't be confused with other organizations. So you want to be very, very clear and simplistic when you choose your your, uh, name. It should be easy to pronounce, avoid complex or confusing terms. Uh, You want it to be recognized easily. You want it to be um, understood. Like if you have a nonprofit for breast cancer, usually it's very direct with what this organization is and what they do. It's, you know, it's very, very easy to understand. You can't really get it conf- confused. So, um, the, the nonprofit name should accurately reflect the mission easily. Uh, and it, it should reflect what the purpose is and just give a clear idea about what you're doing. You remember, you, you want to make this as simple as possible for people to understand It doesn't have to be innovative or super complex. It still needs to be unique and unique in a way that you can differentiate, of course, because you don't want to be confused with another organization uh, and vice versa. So conduct your research, choose a name that's not already taken um, or not being used. Aim for a name that stands out and distinguishes you between other nonprofits. You also want to think about the longevity of this name. You want it to be something that you can scale in the future for years and years to come. One that can withstand the test of time. Ultimately, Um, you know, think about how this will resonate with your target audience, not just now, but let's say 15, 20, 30 years from now. Will it still resonate the same way? So I guess I'm saying don't use something that is a term or a phrase that only can be. I guess, understood in the here and now you want to use something that for the future will ultimately have the same type of meaning for generations. And finally, you want to ensure that that the name that you um, have chosen is, again, not being used in any other database. So you definitely want to go on directories, searches and just make sure that the name itself, again, isn't taken 
because that can already be a thing. You don't want to accidentally take a name from someone else. And then all this work that you do has to be undone just from something so simple. So choosing a name in a legal structure sounds very easy, but it can be very complicated when you're starting a nonprofit. Not as easy as, you know, any not as easy as your LLC or your domestic corporation. Now, uh, registering your nonprofit and your permits. Now, for this one, I'm actually going to break this down into into five steps because these steps can these steps can can be very, very. um, I'm not going to say it's like daunting because it's not that difficult um, when you're saying it, but it can take time. So let's actually break down your registration and your permits. So research. This is going to be a big part of this whole process. You want to research local requirements before diving into the registration process. Again, it's crucial, very, very important that you do research and understand the requirements and regulations in your local area. Um, nonprofit registration procedures can vary depending on your jurisdiction. Let me give you an example. In the state of Georgia, your nonprofit must include at least three uh, not related, uh, not related persons. You cannot have someone who is related to you. Well, three directors that are not related. Okay. That's very, very important in the state of Georgia In California, you need at least three directors, not related and a president, a secretary, a treasurer, or a CFO. And again, these can all vary very differently by the state that you're in. So, um, I recommend, Take your time, visit your secretary of state website or the appropriate government agency that you're going to be filing with. Um, They often provide detailed information, forms and resources to guide you through this process and setting up your nonprofit. And it's again, it's really no different than setting up a business. Just keep in mind that state regulations can vary. There's federal regulations. There's state regulations. The state regulations can be different from each and every state. So if I'm saying something that may that may conflict with your state, understand that I'm just speaking for every single state. So I have to speak. um, I can't be specific. I have to be general. Okay. so file for your articles of incorporation. When I say that, it's the same thing that you do online when you start a business. It's the exact same thing. So. uh the next step is you want to draft your nonprofits articles of incorporation. It's a legal document that establishes your organization's existence, simply meaning you're creating this uh, business. You're establishing it same way that I've talked about online with your LLC or with your corporation. And the steps that I'm going to go over are pretty much the exact same steps that you can go through as a business. But step one, you want to assign a registered agent. Step two, you want to select your officers and directors. Again, when you're creating any business, you do the same exact thing, except with a nonprofit, because we're talking about uh, board members that you need to have. Some of these are required. Normally, you could put yourself as a registered agent. You could put yourself as an officer. You can assign yourself a role, but you will need to have other people assigned in roles for this particular type of business. Um, You may need to provide a certificate Uh, of disclosure. Basically, this confirms that there's no failure on your part uh, uh, that you, you know, didn't disclose any important information. That may be a requirement. Um, You may need a proof of corporate name. This normally is done through the setup process. And then you have to pay your filing fees. Like any other business, you have fees. Um, And then, of course, you'll need to include typically your organization's purpose, like every business, your registered address, your your governing structure um, and other relevant information. And again, there are many in every like secretary of state web, web website. There's a template. There's a sample. There's a form. You usually could walk through this step by step and they show you, you know, there's usually guides. It's It's not very hard once you can see it. It's just, you know, I don't Um, because each one varies. I don't have one to show you. We're just speaking generally. So it probably sounds like a lot, but it's very easy. And of course, next step is obtaining your EIN number because you're going to want to use this when you get your tax exemption. So EIN, I've shown you guys this, you go to irs.gov and you get your EIN. It's free, 
pretty straightforward um and you can apply for it again for free it, it's it's very easy to get your ei in for this type of business structure now um when you apply for the tax exemption status that's going to be different you'll need your ein before you do that but um when you apply for your tax exemption your 501c3 um, if your nonprofit intends to pursue tax ex exemption, then you will need to uh, fill out a form. Now, these forms can vary. Again, it's it's hard to be to be very specific uh, because it can vary. But the form may be a 1023 or form 1023 easy to the IRS. When you're setting up a nonprofit, this will be the one time that I will say, go get a tax professional when you're doing this. Go get a tax professional, preferably someone who specializes in nonprofits. Only reason I'm saying that is because this process with the IRS can take a very long time if it's not done correctly. I do recommend hiring someone who has set up a nonprofit in order to help you set yours up. And this is probably the only time that you're going to hear me say that. I do believe, you know, do your due diligence, do your research, make sure that you're taking the uh, time. But for this type of thing, you can go to the IRS website. You can look up these different forms. There's going to be a fee for every form, but I recommend hiring help in order to, to, to uh, do so. And then state and local. So once again, register with your state and local authorities in addition to federal requirements. You may need to register with state and local authorities to meet certain obligations. This can include registering for state tax exemptions. So obtaining, uh, obtaining your permits in spe uh, that are specific to your nonprofits, uh, in addition to doing it on irs.gov on the federal level, you might have to do it in your state. Again, this takes research and time. This is again why you probably don't see too many YouTubers talking about how to set up a nonprofit because it's not as easy or direct as the other ones. This does take a lot of research and a lot of time. And you know, you do have to really care about the purpose. Um, but I, this is something that again, I really want to do. And I would like to encourage people who have an idea to make a social change to do something to benefit people if that's if you have a cause then you know i please uh take a look at this and start this but these are the steps that you're going to be looking at when you're trying to get those uh those uh permits and of course you're following now uh, I do think you should set up bylaws and operation agreements. So you may want to develop internal policies. Uh, when you navigate through all of this, you want to take the time to have basically you're setting up rules for your nonprofit and they, they call these bylaws and operating agreements for financial management, for the board that you're going to set up um, for, you know, transparency that's the main thing you want to ensure transparency you want to ensure accountability you want to make sure that there's uh an adherence to best practices in regards to your nonprofit organization you don't want to be scrutinized or known for doing anything that is illegal immoral that can hurt your nonprofit you know for the long run so you want to make sure that you have these things set in place as again like a like a checks and balances and um there are some helpful links that i'm going to leave for uh secretary of state that's www.nass.org forward slash directories you can search your secretary of state there's also um irs.gov for uh irs.gov forward slash charities dash non dash profits um, irs.gov to apply for your EIN. And I'm going to provide these resources uh, in the description so that you can take a look at them. Um, and this is going to be all with setting up your nonprofit and going over, you know, setting up your bylaws and doing everything for your uh, state and local, um, your state and local registrations. Um, and again, it's a lot of information I know, but definitely going to be worth it when you're able to get that tax exemption status and then you'll be able to actually um you know start getting funding for your nonprofit now let's talk about building your board 
Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but building a board is super important. Uh, you want to start by identifying your board members. Who is passionate about your nonprofit's cause? You know, who is going to bring diverse perspective? Who is going to be able to help get you to where you want to be at in this organization? Uh, what skills do they have? What experience do they have? Do they have skills in finance, laws, uh, marketing, uh, do, like development for your program, like like uh, governance? There's a lot of different things that you want to do. But uh, once your board is in place and they can, you know, you guys are organized, then you can start to develop things like uh, programs, marketing operations, uh, training and then, you know, you, you just want someone who can who can be there for for ethical reasons to provide, you know, um, organization for fundraising, for things like that. You want to have people who can help you get the job done and you're going to be the one to identify those individuals. So, you know, I will leave that up to you. Now, let's talk about fundraising and grant writing. All right. So. Fundraising and grant writing is one of the, probably like the biggest things that people want to talk about. And I think that when you're looking at fundraising, it starts to become easier once you uh, once you get everything set up. Like, for example, you can actually go to Google. Google actually has Google ads that you can get when you want to market your nonprofit. And excuse me, you can get, I believe, ten thousand dollars per month from Google in order to promote your nonprofit and you can apply for it for, for that. So that's just an example of something that you can actually do once you want to. Um, it's basically a, a type of grant that you can get and you can use to start marketing. So that's a good place to start. Right. You can get a couple of different ones. You can get individual donations. So that's one of the most common ones. Um, this involves reaching out to individuals who care about your cause and inspiring them to contribute and develop a compelling case for support. You also have corporate sponsorships. So those are the ones that we just talked about, like with large corporations, biz businesses like Google or maybe even Apple. Um, you want to, you know, search this, look for opportunities, uh, just tailor your approach to each sponsor so that way you're you're not thinking that you can approach them all the exact same way. They're going to vary just depending on what that organization's belief is. And of course, you want to make sure that you can explain to them why your nonprofit has this amazing cause that can compete with another one's. And you also have events and fundraising. So this is where your board's important. Having someone who can organize these events, these fundraisers, it can be exciting. Um you you want to especially if you're hiring um, an employee, then you want to find someone who is very committed to the cause. Some people will volunteer time for free in order to help your cause, especially when you're getting it off the ground. Once you're able to get these uh, these uh, these grants um, and these sponsorships, then you could even start to you know pay these people who were volunteering their time for free. So. You want to definitely look at events and fundraisers. They're a great way to expand your reach, get people to be engaged, um, especially locally in your community. It's a great way to uh, to definitely get people to be aware about your nonprofit. Then you have grant writing. So grants can provide significant financial support for your nonprofit. I think there is an entire video that we could do separately on grant writing. Um, so I you know, can't get into that at the moment. But you want to tailor your proposal to specific guidelines and you want to clearly articulate what your goals are when you're doing your grant writing. Um, there is a it, it can be long. A long process do that but you want to be diligent you want to make sure that you're following up on dead on deadlines and providing all the required documentation in order to get approved for these grants and just remember grant writing it can be a competitive process it does take a lot in order to get these grants so you need to uh, make sure that you have perseverance and you continue to improve that is key when you are trying to get these opportunities in order to get funding 
All right, so I do want to uh, take the time to thank you guys for watching this video and making it all the way to the end. Uh, when I first started learning about nonprofits, I learned from uh, this individual. His name is Dante Scott. He is a real estate investor, a pharmacy owner, and he is a nonprofit board member, I believe, on two nonprofits. I did add his Instagram here. He actually had an ebook on starting a nonprofit, and I could not find the link. I'll reach out to him and see if he can provide me with that so I can link it at the bottom so you guys can. Um, you know, take take a look at that. I believe it's a very comprehensive guide. And it was a um, I cited a lot of the information that I use in this video from his ebook in order to try to present you with all this information. Most of it came from that. So please, um, if I can get that link, check out his ebook and um, he'll have a lot of good information when it comes to nonprofits, but not just that, also real estate. And if you were interested in learning about, if you wanted to learn about pharmaceuticals or how to get into that, he does that as well. So definitely I recommend checking that out. And uh, with that said, I just wanna, again, thank you guys for watching. I know this was a long video. I know it was a lot of information and it definitely was a lot of information that's not gonna be instantly gratifying. It takes a lot of work, but, um, you know, I want to be able to talk about this to hopefully encourage more people to talk about it so we can see a lot more video. I want to see as much videos on nonprofits that we do on stacking business credit cards and doing all that other stuff and doing this and doing that. I want to see that. I don't want to see just people talking about how to get easy money. I want to see people talking about making the actual impact in their communities. Um, I, I would rather see more videos on that than any video about business credit or credit repair and all that other stuff. I would much rather see stuff like this. So, you know, it has to start somewhere and I'm going to probably be talking about this a lot more, whether it does good on YouTube or not, whether anybody watches it, whether it works for the algorithm doesn't really matter to me. What matters is that the information gets put out there and that interest can be sparked. So if you made it all the way to the end with, I appreciate you more than, you know, I thank you for your interest. If you have any questions, leave them at the bottom. I will try my best to answer them. I will probably be referring most of the questions that you may have for this video to resources and guides because I myself still have not set up a nonprofit organization. I don't believe I'm in the position to do that yet. But uh, if I can, I will try to even have other people uh, maybe join us on this channel, maybe do uh, um, interviews where we can speak to people who have nonprofits and they can give us more perspective than what I can provide. So, again, thank you for watching and you guys have a wonderful day.